team. Welcome to another week of Conversations with Kalia, Athlete to Athlete. Thank you, Kalia. Great to see you again. Yes, as always. Here we are, another week. I just want to thank you for your commitment to giving hope, athlete to athlete. We know we've been on a journey. This is our 10th week to be together, really week by week, making a commitment to show up. So thank you. Yeah, this has been so fun. Well, our desired outcome has been to give hope. So thank you. I hope that we've been able to give athletes hope and just really being on the journey with them. And so today I want to talk about what you've learned in these 10 weeks about really what you need to set yourself up for success. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like really like asking for help and like setting people up to help me like we talked about I think like in week two um or one of the early weeks is like the biggest winning strategy that I have kind of applied to my life um I just feel like for me I like really struggle with like having expectations of like when I'm vulnerable with people or like when I'm struggling and I come to someone for help, like I want them to answer in a very specific way or else I'll just like give up on them. So in order to like not do that and kind of set healthy boundaries, like for myself and the other person, I just think it helps to just ask for what I need, like specifically. So what I hear is really how to set both of you up for success so that the person, obviously, whoever you're you know, sharing your heart with or being vulnerable with, you trust them, you care about them, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, you love them. So you want them to be able to help you. So give us an example of how you've learned to do that. Um, well, I know just like a lot of the time with like romantic partners, I guess. Um like if I'm struggling with volleyball, I also think I'm the type of person who like, I don't like to mix like, I don't know if this is the right term, but like work and play in like the way that like, I don't like to talk about like work when I'm with like my friends or like my partner. Um, so like if I come to him and I'm like, hey, I just like really need you to just listen to me and like maybe rub my back while I cry about how awful volleyball is and then after you listen we can talk about it but like right now that's just what I need um also I just feel like with friends like a way that I reciprocate that that we've talked about again is just like asking the question of like how can I support you um and I just like love that question. I think it like genuinely just connects people and like helps with like just closeness and relationships in general. Well done. I love it. So one of the top things you've learned is how to ask for help and how to set both of you up by saying, how can I support you and listening and doing that, right? A lot of times we say, how can I support you? And then I go and do everything I always wanted to do or my usual way. So it really is an opportunity to change and be really intentional about being there for each other. So what else have you learned on this journey? Uh, oh gosh, there's been so many great things. Um, I think... Something else that I've learned is just like asking myself, like my menu, I think was like a big lesson for me that we talked about. And just like asking myself, like, I don't know. And also just taking my stats on things and like seeing how genuine it feels for me is like a big, I don't know, something that like weighs heavy on my heart and like my daily life. So if something doesn't feel genuine or it doesn't, you know, feel like a power source to me rather than like a power drainer, I like really try to limit my cardio, as you would say, um, and just like try to anchor my journey and like joy and love and like do things that uh, 
I don't know, help me feel joy and love. Like my jungle walks, I try to like implement that in my daily life. Um, and like what other things, my sticky notes are a big one that I've like really loved. Um, I just like went on the roof this morning and read a book in the sun. And it's just like the small little things that like set me up for success. Beautiful. So Clea, one thing about being a pro athlete or being an athlete for your whole life is that we've actually unplugged from ourselves to really be able to operate at that optimum performance level. So from a well-being perspective, you having the ability and the tools now to plug back into you. Mm -hmm. And to really be able to have the ability when you plug into you to monitor or stat up, hey, how am I feeling right this moment? Athletes are usually a rookie at that because we don't ask ourselves how we're feeling because we just need to feel good to perform good. So it's never a question. And, and now it's really great new thinking to be like, I can be empowered and actually perform better and live better and have a great life if I do have the courage to connect and mm -hmm. figure out what's my stat, what's important to me, what do I need? So thank you for that gift of just that, you know, trusting that it's okay to plug in and feel what we're feeling versus feeling like we've got to be disconnected. Yeah, yeah. And what have you learned from a performance perspective on the volleyball court? We've done a lot of work on your season during season and uh, what'd you learn about yourself? Um, I think, like the biggest thing I've like really been watching my film about like my last couple of games in Puerto Rico. And I feel like when I, uh, and this like kind of reminds me of Naomi Osaka and her documentary because she says like a, a comment about having a robot mind when she performs. And I feel like sometimes I'm, so emotional and so like judgmental of myself in my mind and like how I'm performing and if I like just kind of turn on that robot mind and like try to reset in the ways of like being I don't know like technical oriented mm -hmm. like okay this ball may come to my left. If it does take a step back, I know who's in left back, the middle or libero, right back, maybe the setter, I can get them out of system if I have to, or I don't know, just trying to think about like the small things of the game that are like fundamental and like going into the like robot mind kind of, I just feel like is a better space for me than like a space of judgment and I guess that like ties into what we talked about because I think it's more of like a, it's more rooted in truth than anything else. So Clea, the tool that I'd like to give you and the team just to wrap up that in terms of something that we can all use going forward would be emotional management. Mm -hmm. Because when we get into high stress situations, our emotions can somewhat make or break us. And we want to have the emotion of love and passion, the play for the game, not really that joy of competing and all of that good part. If we're afraid of I'm going to look bad or I'm going to let my team down, if we if we separate and have fear versus love, all of a sudden that's when the joy of the game dissipates like in seconds. So I really respect your robot mind analogy because I would reframe it from an emotional management perspective of just being really present in my craft. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that means professionally, when you're playing volleyball, your brain isn't thinking somebody hurt my feelings earlier or my team, you know, like you're not in the emotion of it. You're more in the competitive greatness of how do I be great at my craft? Yeah, I just feel like, yeah, once again, even like at, I know for like the girls and boys who like are out there and like just started and are like, I don't know, early in their career, it like, it may seem, I don't know, kind of like juvenile to just like think about like the fundamentals because I feel like it's just very easy to forget when you're at such a high level or like maybe my thinking just isn't the same as everyone else's and it's like that simple but 
I just feel like, like with volleyball, especially like, you know how to get them out of sister. If you go out of system, if you go to the center, like I know that if the middle is there, I have a better chance of getting a kill on her and like stuff like that. That's like very simple fundamentals to the game, but like it really does get lost in like the chaos that is like my emotional brain. And what a gift to be able to quiet your emotional brain by basically challenging it with the stat, with the, um, you know, the craft. Mm -hmm. Because notice how specific you had to engage your brain to be able to talk those specific things that you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, that's a huge winning strategy. We'd call that kind of the X's and the O's of sports, right? Like those are the plays. And if we can use our power of our mind to really do our craft, what it takes to be great at volleyball in that moment or great in a meeting, if you're, you know, working or that full engagement of being great versus thinking, well, why did my teammate, why did my teammate say something tacky to me? Or my coach did this or notice how easy our mind can go into distraction mode rather than focus mode. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What would be your winning strategies? It's easy to say that. What would be your winning strategies on doing it? Um, good question. <laughs> sure, I'm going to get right on that, right? And it's like, no. you know, how do we do um, it? It's actually interesting because I feel like luck, this is like a blessing and a curse, but like my, my biggest enemy is like really myself. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't really struggle with teammates talking to me. I like really, and I think my like winning strategy with that is I just like really assume that they want the best for me right. as They're teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, even if a teammate says something in a tone that I don't like, I'm like, whatever. Um, but I'm like thinking about my own demons though. <laughs> um, they're loud and they're proud and in charge. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm still working on that strategy, but I don't know. I just, I feel like really just kind of going back to like the fundamentals mm -hmm. and like trying to take, when I think about like just the fundamentals of volleyball, like there's no emotion in that mm -hmm. um and so like it kind of just distracts me for like mm -hmm. like for me I, I've talked to you about this I don't know if I've mentioned it before but it's just like this soundtrack in my head of like you're awful and stupid like all of these things in my head and if I can just be like okay but this person's here I've watched this film I can go high off of that hand that there's no emotion involved in that. Um, so that's my winning strategy. Yeah, I love it. What about if you could be for you as intentionally as you know your teammates are for you? I mean, that's the, that's the winning strategy when your brain gets all noisy like that, just to be like, look, I'm for me and I'm going to focus on the fundamentals. Now yeah. you've at least given your brain a code or a message that it can listen to. And the more you repeat, I'm for me and set yourself up with a fundamental, then your brain will start to have that as a ritual and routine rather than that destructive self-talk. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're in off season right now, which makes everything easy, right? It's like, sure, I'll get to that. Sure. I'll try that. There's no pressure, right? We're in that really beautiful zone of season's over. We survived. It's great. It's amazing feeling um, from that perspective. So what are you doing in your off season for rest and recovery? Um, things that like I want to do. <laughs> exactly. All your tens, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of jungle walks, a lot of, I still like, like I'll go to the gym, um, which like, isn't the most fun activity, but I just feel like in my off season, it feels better. Like I can hit the gym hard and like go off in the gym and then I can like also hit the beach hard and like really <laughs> go crazy there. Like, it just feels like I don't, I feel like a lot of the times in season, I like really 
worry and like it gives me anxiety to think about how many other things in the day that I have um so yeah I'm I'm like watching I'm already (laughs) thinking about it now I'm like my heart's beating fast um but yeah I just feel like in my off season I can just kind of do what I want and I can put all my energy into everything because Mm -hmm. there's no need to conserve anything because I don't have to and what if you got to treat your season like that? Would it be possible to do in season what works for you in off season? Okay, like I'm really thinking like logistically about this. Yeah, yeah that's what I, I want. So say like I wake up at seven, I have like a training session, like a servant pass, eight to nine, then I have weights, 9.30 to 11. Then I have a break and then I have practice five to nine, film and practice five to nine. Right. First of all, just saying that schedule is already overwhelming. (laughs) Second of all, when I'm doing it, like also like in overseas, like that break that I have like that goes to like doing my laundry and then hanging it up because like it's not like the simple things like a dryer like or I have to like cook and then clean all my dishes by hand because I don't have a dishwasher like (laughs) yeah it's just the stuff like that that like those little things start to seem so overwhelming for me that I'm like no I can't do anything for just like joy or like like even I'm thinking about like I used to like meditate during my day but I would like meditate into a nap (laughs) so like I would kind of be doing both and like maybe by osmosis like soaking up the, the meditation um so it's just like small things like that that I'm like no, I don't know if I can do, (laughs) do things for joy. (laughs) And so how many days a week do you like, you get one day off in the pro season? Usually one day a week. Usually. Yeah. I mean, we understand there's all kinds of different things that happen, but if we just started to think about during your off season, Mm -hmm. you're actually training to get your playlist lined up so that you can actually know when you hit your day off, is there a way for you to actually have a day of rest and recovery? That's exactly whatever's all tens for you. And then, and the rest of the week, let's say it's six days a week, you are working. And so that's a matter of you doing exactly the schedule that you just said, and you actually put in laundry and cooking as part of your training so that you're not like, and I have to do this on my off time. I would actually build that in to where your off time is literally two or three hours a day, right? Yeah. I mean, if you start at seven in the morning and then you go all the way through, you have a break at noon and then you do, you know, food and laundry for two hours. Now we're basically from two to five, you're free until you're back at practice from five to nine. Okay. Yes. The only thing, um, like, some people can like take naps for like 30 minutes and then they're like good to go like I am like a four hour nap kind Mm -hmm. of person Mm -hmm. so like the off time that I do have during my day is like truly spent sleeping Mm -hmm. um which I feel like is very good for me but Mm -hmm. it's hard like I don't know I'm thinking about like when I've talked to teammates who were like overseas and they would be like Clea how do you sleep so much like I went to the little cafe and I like was journaling for a little and I was doing this and I'm like girlfriend how are you staying awake this long um so I just like I really do want to schedule like small things like that in my day but I just feel like I don't have the hours well, what if we use your sleep as your joy during training days? Oh, it is. It is. So okay. now like, go ahead, sleep for those three hours or four, four hours, but I just want to reframe it that that's your joy. Okay. Yeah. That's a good reframing. <laughs> yeah. 
So now, Mon you know, for six days, you're basically in training schedule and it's full engagement. I mean, that's what you're committed to. That's the season you're in. So from seven in the morning till nine at night, you know, you have full engagement. And then on your one day, I just want you to be able to do nothing but 10 so that it feels like it's a day that's yours to own and yours to recharge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's important is you can't stack your rest and recovery day with all the things you should have been doing during the week. I want that put into that like noon to two zone to where you're doing laundry, you're doing, so you're in training mode and you're just training for your life and just getting things done. So that on your rest and recovery day, it's nothing but tense. You're not doing laundry or doing things that you've got to do. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I do think that's important and it just like I think we talked about like making things easier for myself is yeah. like that uh, connects with me there. So the good news is that's what rest and recovery season that you have this couple of weeks off it just really teaches you what's super important to you what are your tens because if we don't spend some time investing and in figuring that out when you get one day off it's like what am I going to do with this one day? I got to cram everything in. Like there's more anxiety around managing the one day than actually really? investing in rest and recovery and just knowing what your playlist is. And Hey, I love to have, you know, fun with my relationships on this time, or I want to watch a movie or I, I mean, whatever is on your playlist, you just want to look at it and start doing it. Nothing but tens. Yeah. That on know. that training schedule, based on what we've learned. What did you stat on it? Yeah. Um, like a 10, honestly. So does it feel different from an anxiety and energy management and emotional management? The fact that we reframed your sleep as joy. So you don't feel like you're missing out. It does. Um, it does feel a lot better. I feel like a lot of the times I just need like even a small reframing like that, like really <laughs> does make me feel a lot better. Well, if we hold everything that we don't have the choice and that we're being forced to, it's an energy vampire. I mean, yeah. everything about it is just sucking not only the energy, but also the joy out of it. Mm -hmm. So I really just want to give you back the joy. And the only way to find joy is to find love. Yeah. Thank right? you. And the love of working out and knowing that you're in season and mm -hmm. that you have this great day that you get to look forward to. Yeah. Okay. Any other words of wisdom that you want to share with our team to set them up to be competitively great and find joy on the journey? Oh, um, I feel like those are all my, my core wisdom nuggets. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just like gratitude as always is another big one. So as you watch your film for your season in Puerto Rico, what were some of your tens? Wow, so many. Um, jungle walks, of course. Um, looking at the sunsets, like from our balcony. All of the animals that I got to connect with. I'm like about to tear up. Um, I don't know, it was just, I think I was like really struggling. <laughs> um and it was like nice to be reminded of like the beauty of things and like connecting to nature and tell us about uh, the tears what's showing up for you right now um uh, that I'm gonna have to leave <laughs> um yeah I don't want to leave <laughs> it's gonna be really hard um and just like the weather is really big and like thinking about the cold of Italy. Um, and it's just like a really different season, like this season and like having so much free time and stuff was like really amazing to like also get to explore like myself and like what I like and how that fits in with my career. And it's hard in like other places to just be so career oriented the whole time. It kind of feels like I lose myself. Mm. What a gift of well-being that you just shared with us is I think that we've 
cut ourselves off so much and just <clears throat> had more of a robot life. As you talked about the robot mind, I feel like we've instilled that champion equals robot life. And what a gift to say, you know, new thinking champion equals honoring life and discovering me and, you know, having joy and having three dimensions, personal, professional, and philanthropic rather than just so focused on career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's like, like, I know Italy is like setting me up and like, uh, to like have the freedom to do things like this. And like, it's, it's more than just like about me. Like I want to create a future for my kids and things like that, but it does just like feel really special when you do get these opportunities. Mm. Could we have both? Could you like have this opportunity and set you and your future up? I mean, wouldn't that be a 10? I think I could. I could find. I feel like the word that we've talked about is awe. Like there's so many moments and then it's about, I don't know how beautiful things are here. Mm. And I wish I could awe in like other places but it's like really hard to find and I feel like that's why I feel so special that I'm here um yeah and I wish I had it but it's it's harder to see hmm. what if you found the power to be able to take what works for you wherever you go, rather than thinking that what works for us is in a location or in a person or in something from that perspective, because when our thinking is anchored in, you know, I need this person to be happy, or I need to be in this location to be happy, or I need this to be happy, then all of a sudden we're somewhat powerless because we have to have that in place. So what can you take from what you've learned in Puerto Rico and really empower yourself wherever you go. I was thinking, and I like had this conversation with someone else, like the jungle walks, for example, in Puerto Rico, like, yeah, I could go out and like connect with nature in Italy and like go on a walk, but it's like not the same. Yeah, I want to give you the skill to be able to figure out what it is that you need. So what, tell me what it is about the jungle walks that you love so much. Um, just like how they make me feel. Tell me about how they make you feel. No, I thank you for, you know, sharing your vulnerability and your beautiful tears with us. <laughs> um the jungle walks they just like make me feel so like powerful and beautiful and like I feel like they teach me things every day <laughs> in like the weirdest way there's days where I like walk past um like a dead tree and then like from the tree there's like all of these different things growing and like different species and like they're all living symbiotically together and it's just like so beautiful to like see especially when it feels like I don't know sometimes I'm like I am that dead tree <laughs> and I'm like trying to figure it out and like I have all of these like small beautiful things growing for me and like seeing that on the ground just kind of like I don't know like I know it sounds so corny and stupid but like I just see myself or like I see a struggle that I'm going through or like I don't know it just like depends on the day I feel like life and like points out different things to me depending on what I need to see and like I learn all these lessons and like it's just beautiful I don't know 
That was beautiful. <clears throat> <laughs> so Kalia, the gift that you just gave us is really, we start out by going on some kind of activity or a person or something that, that really awakens us to something that's really important to us. So for instance, your jungle walks have really revealed, I mean, the most beautiful things, powerful, beautiful, you learn something, you relate to it. I mean, that was just beautiful, everything that you shared. So what happens with our, our thinking on that is then we think, okay, I have to go on jungle walks to get that experience. So the jungle walk has all of the power. Instead of you being able to do the exercise that you just did, what is it about the jungle walks that I love so much? So I went to the aspect of the jungle walks rather than the activity. So that's the skill I want to empower you with is that when you go on an activity and it's attend to you and it really resonates with your soul and your heart, break it down into the aspects because now when we go to Italy, you're looking for something that feels beautiful. It teaches you something in the moment. It relates to you. Like all the things that you just described, we're going to discover in Italy what that's called. So it won't be jungle walks in Italy. It'll be something else. Yeah. I think I'm just scared that I'm not um like powerful enough on my own to like discover that somewhere else so we didn't have jungle walks before we got to puerto rico yeah right so i mean it was our it was something that you discovered in this season that has been a game changer for you mm -hmm. and so what if we looked for in italy what's going to be your jungle walks yeah <laughs> Because you knew when you came to Puerto Rico, you were missing something, yeah. right? Like we, we knew you were in a struggle and Puerto Rico gave you the gift of healing. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know how, you didn't know how it was going to happen. That's why we started this journey, right? To just really track it because you knew you were struggling, but you didn't know how you were going to heal. And jungle walks became a winning strategy. I just don't know if I'm like healed yet. I feel, mm. and I think that's like where a lot of the tears are coming from. I just wish I had more time here. Mm. And so how much time do you have there before you have to go to Italy or you get to go to Italy? Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> a little slip there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice correction. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep the reframing going here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, um, happens to the best of us <laughs> um, um i don't know i don't know um they're trying to figure out my visa process right now so like that's also the like hard thing about playing overseas it's just like not too organized so i could get to go in a week I could get to go in two weeks it could be two days like there's just there's just no knowing ever so the great part about that Kalia is you can't control it right so if we come back to our winning strategy of control what you can control while you're in Puerto Rico right now your desired outcome is healing so let's just full engagement of enjoying every bit about the healing process that Puerto Rico has given you and when Italy calls trust and have faith that you'll be ready what does that feel like that feels like a lot less pressure and just like it feels so much better I just like need to remind myself of it every time I start to feel sad or like I'll start to think about the fact that I'm going uh, back and it like scares me. Yeah. So let's anchor in our tools of competitive greatness. The truth is going back scares me because I, I don't know if I'm ready. I have faith that I'm going to use my time in Puerto Rico to heal. And, and I have faith that whatever is needed in Italy, I'm going to have the ability to do. And I'm going to focus on love, just the joy of love and what I've got right now. So there's you still being competitively great for you, even in your rest and recovery season. 
Yeah. Yeah. So true faith and love, right? Really important. Yeah. How's your heart? That's good. She's like, (laughs) she's good. Like, really, she is good. I'm just like, I don't know, I guess in a place of gratitude. But I'm just like, really, it's like really bittersweet. Yeah. Yeah. Some new thinking is we only get sad about leaving or a season ending when we've had so much love and joy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like very grateful for like the people and Mm. the experiences that I have had being here. And those can never be taken away. Even when the season ends, we still have all the film in our heart and our soul. Like it's been a game changer for you, right? Mm -hmm. And that never gets taken away. In fact, we just keep building on it to bring all the gifts of Puerto Rico packed in your suitcase now to Italy. (laughs) (laughs) And you get to go. (laughs) Yeah. You get to pack that suitcase and you get to go to Italy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get to bring all your sticky notes with you. Mm-hmm. So you can bring that with you. Um, have you taken some great pictures of all your um, jungle walks? I have. I should like print them out or yeah. something. Because actually, whenever we see a picture of it, it brings back the emotional film. And so you get like a joy break right there just by being able to see it and experience it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Good. So we're coming up with some winning strategies of how to take everything that was the tens from Puerto Rico and pack it in your new bag for your new adventure to Italy. Yes. (laughs) Kalia, thank you for the journey of finding joy on the journey with you in Puerto Rico and being able just to, I don't know, just it was such a gift to be able to be with you and to discover life with you, volleyball and adventures and so much. So thank you for that gift. Thank you for your love and support. Team, it's up to you now. You get to go out, whatever adventure you're on, whatever country you're in, whatever thing you're about to get to do, you want to actually anchor in joy and love and be competitively great for you. Truth, faith, and love. So thank you, team. Go out, make it a great week, win your week. Thank you, Kalia. Mm-hmm.